I'm Charles Ward. I um, was in the infantry in the 5th Infantry Division, Regular Army Division. I joined them in uh, the 5th, well I joined the service as soon as I got to be 18. I was uh, lucky enough to get to infantry OCS at Fort Benning, Georgia. Then I was assigned to the 5th Infantry Division, which was in Northern Ireland, waiting for the training, making final preparations and training for the landing in Normandy. It occurred to me, Tim, that uh, this was going to be the great experience of my lifetime. And now while many men of my era, and I'm the one included, say, oh, Gosh, I didn't want to go, I tried to get out. A awful lot of us still wanted to go because I knew that there would be, never be anything like that again. There, there's kind of the feeling that once we landed, you know, and fought our way through that first uh, engagement, that from then on it was really, relatively easy. But that really is not true because in Normandy is a is a head, uh, um, just a marvelous acres of hedgerows. And those hedgerows were made of, uh, they piled up stone, and since uh, the 10th century, I guess, uh, the stones had, uh, somehow the vegetation had come together and trees were growing out of them. And their hedgerow country was about as tough as Normandy itself. But ultimately we got out of it. We fought in this awful thing of Metz, which had been fortified since Caesar's time. And the, it was a horrendous place to attack, but we finally got through with the other units and were in, uh, sent to, uh, for rest to Germany. We liberated part of Germany by that time. Until we found out one, <clears throat> we'd been there maybe 10 days, and we're just again beginning to feel civilized reasonably when Patton ordered the 5th Division north to attack the underside of what we now call the Bulge. We called it the Ardennes. I didn't know it was called the Bulge until probably after the war. They pulled me out of the line and put me on a bus with a bunch of other guys and drove us all around so we wouldn't know where we were or have any idea where we were and we wound up and we got to this place and they pulled us over and they gave us all fresh, clean, beautiful uniforms because we looked like we, you don't, can't imagine what we looked like and smelled worse. So that when Patton put the, gave us a medal, we'd look like real soldiers, like he wanted us to look like, you know. And I thought, boy, this is great. This is worth getting a medal for. Except that as soon as we all saluted and he turned around and left, they marched us back in there and said, okay, turn your uniforms back in. So I got my same uniform back. In the, in the infantry, really, think about it. You're living out there in the, in the woods. You don't change clothes. I think I don't change, I don't believe I got a new shirt from Normandy till halfway to Paris because I remember the, the the sweat band around here was just a kind of it was a glaze you know mm -hmm. i would worn that shirt so long I can't imagine what it smelled like I just can't imagine what yeah. it smelled like we were the first troops to make a, an assault crossing of the Rhine there had been up at Remagen uh, they'd captured a bridge you know and we'd taken that bridge and went across but we were the first ones to go over shooting our gun. And, uh, uh, gee, that was, a, that was a remarkable experience. We made that crossing of the Rhine, and uh, that indicated that, that crossing of the Rhine indicated to us, really, that the war was over. Because when we would enter little villages, they would put sheets, hang sheets from the balcony or from trees to indicate that they were surrendering, there were no troops there. 
I think at the very end, you were uh, at the point that you knew so many of your friends were gone and that you were still alive. I think that was the, the dominant thought of your existence. I'm still alive. I'm so very thankful to be still alive. I can't imagine why me and not other people. So it's only a little short distance after that that when that feeling sort of subsides, you began to think, well, now we, we did this, we killed those people, we did that, did we do the right thing? You, you wonder about it, you think about it. You go into a war, you have no earthly idea what it's like. And I suppose, I suppose if you get right down to it, most of us think about the, the people we've killed. And, and to me, I often wonder, would, uh, would Germany have been better if this guy had lived? He might be the prime minister. Those things go through your mind. I remember one time uh, we captured some Germans near the end of the war and they were sitting around there and they began to sing and I remember they could sing in harmony. Well you know Americans can just barely sing period. But these guys were singing in harmony. I thought my god are we fighting these guys? Look what they can do. Yeah. Here you try to analyze is this going to do what it's supposed to do? You know. Yeah. It's, it's difficult. Difficult, yeah. But I had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had some good times. I don't mean to want it sound as if all just the dickens. Yeah. I had some good times.